Want to learn engineering and science? Well, you've tuned in to the right channel. Hit subscribe and press the bell icon and never miss an update from us. Hi there guys, how are we doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas and it's going to be yet another session in this lecture series based on engineering drawing. Today, we're going to be taking up a problem based on projection of solids, which we'll be solving, we'll be constructing rather, with the help of auxiliary planes or the change of reference technique. All right. So let's see what the problem has in store. Here we go. It goes like this. A hexagonal pyramid base 25 mm side and axis 50 mm long. So this over here is a hexagonal pyramid. Okay. Have a closer look at this. Base in the form of a hexagon having six sides. All of them are 25, 25, 25, 25, 25, 25 each. Then there is the axis from the center till the apex. This length has been given as 50 millimeters. So that was all about the dimensions of this object. All right. What's next? Now there is this condition given in the problem guys has an edge of the base on the ground. So it's going to be something like this. Watch this very carefully. It's kept something like this. This edge over here, okay, this base edge rather is in contact or in absolute contact with the ground. So what conclusion can you make? The conclusion that you can make is that out of the six edges or out of the six base edges, there is one base edge which is in contact. That means the remaining five base edges are up in the air. And in that process, this axis over here from here till we reach here is going to make or is definitely going to make some amount of angle with the horizontal plane. Watch that angle. Let's take a look. Its axis is inclined at 30 degrees to the ground. Ground refers to the horizontal plane. Don't be confused. Anyways, and parallel to the VP. Okay. Um, draw its projections. All right. So let me let me reiterate this one again, once again. So it's it's kept in this way. Okay. Um, how can I hold this this way? Okay, let me try to hold this again this way. If I can extend this axis over here, the angle that it's going to make is how much? 30 degrees with the horizontal plane. So if the axis is making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal plane, then our initial assumption is going to be like this. We are going to assume that the entire object is resting with its base on HP. And then we just got to think from where can we see the true shape of its base? The answer is pretty obvious. It can only be seen from the top. And therefore, we have to begin by making the top view. And this is exactly what you're going to see. That's the top view. Okay. That's the top view. And that's the front view. Right. So let's go ahead and make this. That's the top view. Okay. That's a hexagon. Uh, hexagonal pyramids. Top view. And that's the front view. <coughs> there you go. Now this height has to be taken as 50 millimeters. I have not written the dimension. I forgot. Anyways, don't worry. Now that the front view is done, let's talk about the axis inclination. Axis is inclined to the horizontal plane. It's, it's, it's going to be something like this. Axis is inclined to the horizontal plane. So as far as the change of reference method is concerned, this change of positioning of the object will not happen. What will happen is instead of uh, inclining the axis at a certain angle 30 degrees with the horizontal plane what we'll try to do is we'll let it remain in the initial position like this and we'll have a reference plane over here making an angle of 30 degrees with the axis itself it's going to be something like this okay like this or like this whatever whichever way i think we're going to do the like do it like this let me show you exactly how that can be done here we go so that is essentially an auxiliary inclined plane guys if you watch this and this auxiliary inclined plane over here, along with the axis, if I can just make this over here, this angle over here is going to be equal to how much? This angle is going to be equal to um, 30 degrees. Let me erase this. It's not looking good. Now, you guys might be wondering why this auxiliary inclined plane has been made to pass through this A dash B dash. There is a very specific reason. It's clearly mentioned that an edge of the base has to remain in contact with the ground. That is with the HP. That's why. Okay. Otherwise, we would have uh, kept this line away from this object. Okay. Anyway, so that was all about the positioning of auxiliary inclined plane with reference to the axis at an angle of 30 degrees. And now what we'll do is we'll try to pass lines or produce lines from all these points. Okay this way in such a manner that they are going to be intersecting this line at an angle of 90 degrees. So the best way to do this with the, is with the help of a mini drafter. You can keep one scale of your mini drafter over here so that the other scale becomes absolutely perpendicular. Then tighten the screw and then keep on drawing lines like this. 
simply with the help of a 4H pencil. Anyway, so what we are doing is we are trying to prepare an auxiliary top view over here. An auxiliary inclined plane is where an auxiliary top view is prepared and for preparing an auxiliary top view, you have to take the reference of this top view. Okay, so right now we are here x1 y1 so before x1 y1 we have x y now what we'll try to do is we'll take arcs of all these points all these six points rather seven points along with o also with respect to x y and we're going to put them up over here with respect to x1 y1 that's the easy way okay and we are essentially looking at this object from over here from here all right fine so let's see we want to have point a somewhere here point a and b in fact are going to be lying on this line so keep one leg of your compass here, other leg here. That's the radii of the arc that we're going to have to put up. And with this as the center cut and arc, and that's going to be point A. It's that simple. Now, keep one leg over here, other leg over here at B. And with this guy as the center, okay, cut an arc, and that's going to be point B. Let's take the arc for point C. One leg over here. Now, with respect to X, Y, we're taking up this arc. And then we, with respect to X, one, Y, one, we're going to be putting up that arc. Keep one leg over here, other leg at C, and with that much amount as the radii, you're going to have to take this as the center, and that's it. That's going to be point C. Similarly, you can mark the remaining points, and this is exactly what you're going to get. And finally, we have to mark O also. So O is over here. You need to take this as the radii of the arc, and you need to take this as the center, and that's it. That's going to be point A, O, in fact. So what essentially, guys, we're doing is we're trying to take a look at this object from over here. So from here, you can see how many edges, let me tell you. This edge is clearly visible. O dash D dash and O dash E dash. Both of them are clearly visible. O D and O E. And apart from that, O F is also visible. O C is also visible. Okay. And this base edge, F E D C is also visible. These are the base edges and slant edges which are clearly visible from over here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make them dark solid lines. Here we go. Okay, so the stuff which is not visible has to be some given some respect in the form of a headed line and <clears throat> But before that let me make the axis. So the axis starts from here ends up over here So somewhere here at the center of CF we are going to have the base of the axis you can see it's going to be something like this And that's it. These are the hidden lines That's it So that is essentially the projection or the top view or the final top view of a hexagonal pyramid whose base edge is in contact with the horizontal plane and at the same time its axis is at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal plane. So guys that was all from my side for today. If you've got any doubt or query do write them down in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer them and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering drawing or engineering graphics then do share and like this video, subscribe to this channel and also press the bell icon. So that whenever I upload a new video, you get a notification, you get an update. And to let your friends know about this channel so that they can also benefit. Anyway, I'm going to be back with more such videos on drawing and mechanics. Until then, it's a wrap. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care, have a great day and keep drawing.